Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the Dota 2 Champions League. We're here with Meow111 versus Rebels. Well, after game number one, it was kind of disappointing. You know, Mike and I here were thinking that Meow got it and it'll you know, make things interesting. But Rebels uh, decided to pull some good team fights together and, well, took the game piece by piece and uh, ended it by 31 minutes. Now they pick up a first pick, Magnus, here for Meow. Copycats, what do you think of them, Mike? What do you think of them? Uh, how cheesy can you get with Magnus? I think that's, that's what I'm asking right now. Like, I want to see Meow just kind of play a normal game. Like, last game, the game plan was kind of normal, I guess. You know, just a, it was kind of like a Drow-esque build, right? Like, you just get a couple of items up, you make a 20-minute mega push, you take towers, you gain an advantage, and you usually win the game after that. Yeah, they didn't do it with like your conventional heroes, but uh, I want to see Meowage play like you know, you know, vanilla kind of you know, mid rangey type of game. Like, pick an OD and Seconds have him remaining. go towards the mid lane and have him have a good time. But you know, it, well, it remains to be Five seen. Of course, uh, I'm not really sure about this Magnus first pick. I liked it when Rebels were doing it because it's really good against potential Meepo from Meow. Not really sold on it just yet. Although Meow can do exactly what Rebels did in the last game. Uh, Rebels have a slaughter, and slaughter is usually pretty good at making sure that those kind of farming strats don't get off the ground. Alright. Well, Sansa is definitely a, I would say at this point, still a CIS special. You agree? No, I don't think I, uh, I see any other regions picking it up as often as they do. Yeah, I mean, you, you would know if it was a, a C thing. I don't think I've seen it in NA at all, really like zero pick na it's kind of just a rare pick in general like everywhere it's it's kind of that thing where it's really strong if you do get survive the laning phase with him mm -hmm. because you always have that option to shut the enemy up stop those combos from coming in screw up those initiations counter initiations suddenly your oracle is not as good because of the clutch saves that he needs to play while your silence uh, mutes him so it's kind of um a good strategy, especially pairing up with the Slaughter, someone that can really start the heat and uh, have that Lifestealer maybe combo up with him. I think that's what Meow will be looking to banning. I think Slaughter, Lifestealer, the best one-two punch there is when it comes to physical output. Maybe PA can be a close second as well, but uh, yeah, now you see that Oracle immediately because they know that with Slaughter means someone is going to get jumped. And uh, when someone gets jumped, you want that Oracle there. I like the silencer's response to the Magnus. Like, you're not going to be able to stop an RP most of the time, but if you, you know, see your allies get RP, you immediately jam that button. Uh, you may be able to stop the skewer out. You definitely stop any of the damage follow-up after that Five RP. Or at least, you know, you know un until BKBs and whatnot uh, come out, Lotus Orbs and stuff like that. So uh, I think it's an okay response just as far as that is concerned. Uh, what Rebels can also do right now is look to kind of set up for a Legion Commander pick. So, you know, with the Slaughter and Legion Commander, you just, you know, rotate around the map, get kills everywhere, and just play, like, the ultimate tempo game. And Silence is not here that can protect that very, very well. I would be a little bit more afraid, if I was Meow, about that life that you were talking about, the PA as well, definitely up there in the uh, Slaughter Synergy department. But uh, yeah, Rebels have just so many options with this opening, whereas for Meow, they need Five a melee core to capitalize with this Magnus. Uh, we've seen Gyrocopter, I guess, a couple times, Medusa a couple times. They're kind of... Eh, not really great with the Magnus, but you know, looking at Juggernaut, now that Slark is banned out, he's probably on the top of the list with PA and Lifestealer not too far behind. Alright, well, there goes my 1-2 punch. Meepo is still not banned, completely ignored, could happen, banned. Sven being banned, do you Radiant see a pattern here? <laughs> I mean, the heroes that work well with Slardar, because Slardar just gives more damage, are usually the relatively same heroes that work well with Magnus, because Magnus also just gives more damage. Like, at the end of the day, that's just what Empower Five does, it's what remaining. Amplify Damage does. Uh, I mean, there's still just Juggernaut to pick up right Five now, and Rebels do remaining. have to keep the Meepo in the back of their mind. Like, every single hero has to have some sort of counterplay versus Meepo. Slardar is incredible. Uh, Silencer is situationally very good, like, cancelling poofs, cancelling Earthbind, Micro, it's pretty important, and it's very hard to itemize against a silencer as a Meepo. I would dare say impossible. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, they just have to keep that in their minds. And I want to say that's also maybe why Meow 
choose to ban out the Sven instead of taking up themselves? Uh, I don't know. It's... I don't know. These, okay, right now, with these two picks, Slada, Silencer, has it messed up enough to the draft that if a Meepo comes down now, will you be able to do anything? No, I think it's fine. Like, Slaughter is really good at keeping Focus Meepo fire. down early on. Yeah, just kill this one clone, and everyone knows exactly which one because of the amplified damage animation. Uh, Silencer is not great at killing off the Meepo, but he's great at messing with the Meepo's micro. Just global silence, and then they can't do anything. Ooh. Ooh. That's interesting. It doesn't exactly go great with the Slaughter synergy-wise. They have the same game plan, that's for sure. And there's no, if we can't get to side, you, we so. pull you in. That's true. It's like, okay, if we if we blink crush someone, we hit silence. If we hook someone, we press silence. Yay! <laughs> I think that's the game plan here. Rebels are looking at some fun, I think. Uh, I certainly won't say no to a pudge game. And I've seen what good pudging can do to a match. It just scares the hell out of supports. It destroys the whole mechanic of how someone plays the game because you can't be here at some time, you have to watch your positioning sometimes and it really can mess up some people. And uh, a good support patch in the early game can be more pressure than any hero combination combined. I definitely like it. kind of going like all in on the supports though. Like we already talked about Silencer. If you have a decent time, your game might just be amazing and you could turn into a core. Pudge, if you have a slow time, then you're com almost completely useless as well. So like if they have a good early game Rebels, then they're absolutely terrifying. If they have kind of a mediocre to bad light game, I'm not really scared of a silencer. I'm not really scared of, of a low level Pudge if I'm with an Oracle and Darkseer who's going to be going for a mechanism. Uh, they have so many ways of answering should someone get hooked. So uh, Rebels are playing kind of with fire here, whereas on the Meow side, they're yeah, maybe a little bit kind of AoE ultimate base. So if Rebels positioning is good, then it'll be hard to punish. But uh, they have the Magnus, they have the Darks here. What more setup could you possibly want? They do need that payoff hero, though, to actually make use of the fact that there is so much AoE setup. That PA is always good. Slot would have been great, but it's been uh, anti mage. Seconds remaining. Uh, anti mage is all right. Five seconds remaining. With that, no, like, with that empower, he's really good. Yeah, like he, he's he's a melee hero who's gonna you know, right click things. I, I would say that PA is usually gonna be better. You know, anti mage is I guess okay up against silencer invoker. Yeah, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind okay, it. Okay, no I mean, jug again. <laughs> so it's like a, what a mirror. surprise, right? Yeah, I mean he's he's good at everything, almost. I would say he's like the he's like the jack at all trades, you know. But I wouldn't say exactly. I wouldn't exactly say master of none. So. It's it's uh it's definitely a good hero, Juggernaut. This guy. He's got all the stuff. Got the healing ward as well. Very strong, especially combined up with the Oracle. You know, you have that double healing. Not to be underestimated. Could really top someone off really quickly. Plus Sven is already banned, so you don't have to worry about that extra armor coming out from the rebel side. Which is uh you know I, I suppose good good foresight for Meow, just protecting their eventual juggernaut pick with a very early uh, ban there. You, you can't really blame me out if you're going for this again. It's pretty safe. Rebels grab the invoker. Uh, most likely going to be an exhort invoker. I want to see Rebels try to get aggressive really early on. Whereas on the Meow side, I, I think that's going to be... Magnus or Darkseer, they're definitely going towards the jungle here. Five like, seconds remaining. Usually it would be, uh, you know, just all three of those heroes going towards their respective lanes. Mag mid, Darkseer. Uh, Darkseer off, Juggernaut safe, but... Uh, I have a very strong feeling that Meow are going to be doing something Dyer jank with the Magnus, turn. maybe? Is there any, like, there is, like, a hill spot, right, on the Dire Jungle that you could hit things with Mag? Mm. Am I wrong about that? Wrong about what? I, I'm, a little bit, I'm a little bit behind in my Magnus cheese jungling, but I'm pretty sure there is a spot in the Dire Jungle. Oh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, can yeah. you can cliff jungle, yes, yes. yes. The, it's the top remaining. ward, the top rune ward, that, that jungle camp. Yeah, you can you can like cut you you know you don't have to cut through the trees now because you have that uh, movement you can you can path through because they made way, mm -hmm. you can go to that edge and hit trees. There you go. So they, they couldn't resist. Yeah. Radiant teams turn to pick. Yep. <laughs> couldn't I mean, resist. It's meow, right? This is what we come to expect from them. They're gonna throw a curveball at you. It's just a matter of time. 
I wouldn't say this is a curveball. I think this was a long time coming, honestly. I, I like how both teams have five seconds of reserve time. Exactly. <laughs> Uh, I would say maybe Rebels just go ahead and uh, run that silencer as a core. I don't know. Reserve time. Or maybe pick up something. The thing, is with, PA? The thing is with silencer as a core against Meepo is that uh, you do die very, very quickly. So you have to always get good positioning against the Meepo, which is not easy up against good Meepos. So yeah, they're just going to pick up a Morphling. Like, this is a hero that's very difficult to kill off with Meow's draft. Like, they have a good amount of bursts with the Juggernaut and Meepo Poofs and whatnot, but as far as lockdown is concerned, I mean, Earthbind, you could just, just replicate out. Just replicate out of everything. Yeah, alright. So, we'll see. Morphling on Sidoy. So, we have Sonic on the Magnus. Sonic did play the Windrunner last game, so this is a... I think this is a jungle Meepo. Yeah, it's a jungle meepo. You purely jungle meepo? I I'm not a meepo guy. Uh, I had a friend Second that could name. jungle. I that played a lot of meepo, and I remember him going Iron Talon, cutting a lot of trees Second at the name. start, and trying to go jungle. Maybe it's some weird arrangement where they let him soak till level three. Uh, I don't know what's happening. I feel like that. These guys always put the wrong guys in support, so I don't know. They have this <laughs> thing. Yeah. I'm I, I feel like the most common thing I see is Meepo getting first point divided we stand and then still staying in the lane if he can. If it's not safe for whatever reason, then you go to the jungle. It's not really incredibly fast once you're level 3 because your poop is only going to be level 1. So that's, you know, not exactly great. I mean, level 2 soon and it's, it's still not the best. But, uh, you know, they do have options of getting this Meepo, you know, kind of hidden away behind your Darkseer and your Juggernaut early game. Uh, Rebels, as far as applying pressure early on, they're okay at doing it. Not really the best, but I think like with this Morphling, they might just be able to uh, handle Meow in the late game, while at the same time keeping tempo early on with this Pudge Invoker. Well, let's see what happens here. I mean, the, the Pudge is going to have a field day. No, almost no support rotations could be coming out here from either team, so a hook could be a kill here on either of the teams, but it is, um, it is a concern as to how he would actually catch this darts here. There is no movement in pairing, or rather purging, coming out from rebels. So, even if you hook him, you rot him. He has that surge away. Unless he sticks at level, stays at level one for a long time, I don't know how they're gonna kill him unless they get some crazy body blocking going. Yeah, it's mostly gonna be towards the mid lane where I'd expect there to be. Uh potential rotations and action and whatnot. Like, Silencer is just not a hero that likes to move around a lot. If you can, and if you can steal intelligence early on, it's fantastic, but usually that's not going to happen. So uh, Pudge can't really kill off the darks here, especially not with the Morphling and Silencer helping him out. So mid lane definitely seems uh, fairly viable. And in my wilds, though, do you, you do get Exhort here, right? Wex is really good up against Meow, though. Uh... Well, there is um, there is the issue of wanting that firepower, so maybe you want that exhort when your slaughter gets crushed or your punch gets a hook in. You know, you might need that extra firepower to knock someone out. So I think it's still exhort. There's no reason to go cross wax here. They they aren't really playing that cheese. Yeah, there you go, the exhort. Yeah, they're not playing. Really, they're not really playing that cheese strategy where they. They try and go for that cross wax with the draw ranger pick, and then really push base with uh, with that huge team fight control. Uh, wow, Rochka uh, not going for any regen early game, just picking boots and like YOLO, blocking camps. I love it. <laughs> All right, there we go. Yep. This is gonna screw them so badly if they don't have the blocks for it. You gotta do what you gotta do to slow down Meepo's stacks. Like even from the super early stages. Uh, you need to make sure you're proactive about keeping eyes on where the Meepo is, making sure that just passively, even if you don't know where he is, you're messing with his farm, so you know, it is kind of a necessary evil. Uh, but I'm, I'm just like going to throw this out there. Wex is really good up against Darkseer and the Magnus and the Meepo, just Tornado EMP, and then you can't poof at all. I wouldn't be surprised, but uh, it does seem like he's going to go pretty hard into the Exort right now, but yeah, whatever. Uh, no, it's just I'm that you can't lane. These... You can't lane with Wex. That's the problem. 
you just cannot lane with Wex. Yeah. Without Drow it's Aura, you can't, you can't do it. You just can't. Against an so, experienced uh, player, he'll destroy you. But uh, Meepo is played by Ascendancy, so it will be a mid Meepo. This ain't no snowball fight. And is Magnus uh, is gonna roam with Skewer? Okay. Is this actually happening? Okay, it's gonna. Ha oh, oh no. Okay, I thought he was gonna do some cliff jungle, but no, we are going to go for that. He's gonna try and snipe the courier. And I don't. Oh man, this is huge. Okay. Oh no! Uh, uh. Get him! Run! Got him! Skewer, oh! Oh, you missed the hook! Got him! That was worth it. He's gonna get killed though. That's first blood. Right? Am I wrong? No. I... Dead. He's no, not dead. Not. There, there are the boots. No. And he's even gonna mess oh. up that off lane. Oh, that is so big to get. And well, one. He pulls himself. Okay. A, he pulls himself a level two. That's nice. And is he, he gonna bring it to the dark seer? Nah, he's keeping it for himself. Maybe. Pull it to okay, the. Okay, so it's the jungling. Pure jungle dark seer. Is Magnus? We go down to the off lane now. I mean, yeah, they're again doing like weird stuff here. Shots is getting jumped up towards top lane. Should be just fine. Uh, but a uh, pure jungling dark seer is is kind of slow to get going. But once you have level two, level three, and then iron shell, then you blow through the jungle like nobody's business. As far as pressure that Meow can apply to the rebel side, it's almost non-existent. Top lane maybe get a kill on slaughter, but it's hard to kill a slaughter with Meepo because you just get crushed and you can't do anything. Mm -hmm. And I like this Junk mid instead of Invoker, uh, instead of Meepo mid. Junk this does really well against Invoker. You can't really do much against the Junk as Invoker and uh, you have such perfect animation that you can deny a lot of the Invoker CS and even do some harassment and because it's an excellent Invoker, a kill on him is very easy once you get level 6. If you get the right position. Magnus is leaving the bottom lane now. <laughs> I think he actually just is, like, roaming with Skewer. What is going on? And he might actually get a good angle here on Invoker. If you skewer him back into a spin, Invoker's in a lot of trouble. Mm-hmm. Hastern as well, but he's he's pinged out by Rochka now, so I think Invoker is not gonna have that up. Yep. Botches that, and uh, I guess he's gonna run for the Bounty Rune. He's getting okay levels, honestly, given his ridiculous situation. And Pudge is like, oh man, I watered for nothing. I just can't really do that much here. Like, even if you hook a Juggernaut, you're not gonna kill him. You can't really go okay, for top Okay, that net was interesting. Oh, they netted him. That's that's good. And just threw him back. That's nice. Is that a kill, Sonic? Okay, that's okay. What? <laughs> Okay. See, that's that's the problem with Magnus Roaming. on the roam. If you skewer mid lane, then you might be able to drag him to the tower. You have a Juggernaut there with spin. It's fantastic. But Magnus doesn't do that much damage. So you may be roaming, but you're you're not an Earth Spear. You don't offer that much control. You're not a Bounty Hunter. You don't offer that much payoff. So uh, it's a little bit of an awkward situation here for Mag. Denied. Oh, Butch kills himself. Gets himself tranquils and a uh, full tank of health, so he was doing a little bit of jungling, I think. Yeah, he jungled on that uh, large camp, got himself level 2, so now he's got a little bit of killing potential. Darkseer's already level 3.5, about hit 4, so Seedor is already feeling the heat here from this iron shell. Morphling is an average hero at dealing with Darkseer, and Silencer being in the area doesn't really exactly help. Silencer, though, has not had to deal with any heroes, so he is level 3 just by pulling and jungling and whatnot. So that, that's that's pretty good for rebels, and they are actually rotating Pudge towards top. This is a bait. Shasha wants them to go deep on him. Oh, nice hook as well, and that will be our going down there. Do they get the kill though? Nope. Instant TP out. Safe. And again, TP's being a problem. No stun strike there. Yep. Report to my wall. That's the reason why they're going for this Exort. I mean, once he starts TPing, you just drop a beam on his head. <laughs> once you get the hook, you just drop a beam on his head or a crush or something. Just, just no help from the Invoker at all, I guess. 
Got it is a tough lane up against Juggernaut to like really have a good time as a poker, so I guess he's not really paying attention, but you know, I would take the free kill. Yeah. Maybe teammates should help ping it out as well. We both still Top lane, do maybe again. Things. Oh yeah, Sonic. In a lot of trouble here. Rajka coming in with the rot there. But I think now a sun strike will be a great time. Walks right into it. There you go. First blood goes to the punch of all people. And that's a good one again. A nice deny coming out from the punch. Keeps himself alive. Shashla will run away. Purifying Flame should not kill him at level 1. And, uh, he'll back off there. So Nice first blood going away. And uh, Tema Wild finally lending that off-site off support number. Getting that spin in. He does have the Omni Slash. So the concern right now for Rebels is we don't see the Meepo. We see the Magnus taking the Meepo safe lane. They should know exactly where the Meepo is, but they don't really have good heroes to roam into the jungle and actually kill the Meepo. Slaughter is good once it gets Splink Dagger. That is a long way off because just minute six right now. And Meepo is level six. So Sandesi is going to be blown through the jungle without any sort of pressure being applied to him. Oh. And the other lanes from Meow aren't really losing Number used to spin. Numbers. He gets hooked. That's the rod as well. The cold snap will be there now. <laughs> Using all his defensive now. Immediately gonna get punished. Gets brought down by the invoker as well. Rebels. Pull ahead there. 2 0 now. You could lose the Juggernaut a handful of times. This is, at the end of the day, going to be a Meepo game for the Meow side. And if Meepo is able to get some farm, then he's actually able to buy space for the Juggernaut oh. to empower farm. But oh, Sentency. Roger. Sentency oh. sees him. Nice hook. Holding hook. it. Holding hook. it. The puts. Uh, Rod, okay, now he's just dead, Roger. Oh, oh no! no. Uh, he still gets yeah, it! Him. What? No <laughs> mana as well, 40 purifying flames! Are you kidding me? Oh man, I told you, That's a good weird. pudge is just gonna ruin the game for whatever. He denies himself. Perfect. Great pudge is always so fun to watch. I want to learn that hero, but I just don't play pudge. So, yeah, was... you don't want to be that guy to pick the pudge, right? Yeah, I don't want to be that guy. I let my friends do it, and I was like, I feel like playing pudge now. <laughs> Alright, I'll play Dazzle, but you know, I don't want to play the pudge. But it does seem like a hero that can impact so much in the game, and you can still have fun, even if the game's not going that well. Oh, crush you can going see, on. It's, uh, this is looking like a hit game for the pudge more so than this. He's died three times, that was all suicides. So, oh, wow, like, Shashlo given anything to the opponent. He's going ham on these two, two players, I don't know, Sonic and... AR running away from a single slaughter. This is what happens when that slaughter's been getting so much space in the lane. And yeah, now he's gonna have some free time to gun towards that blink dagger. Magnus with level 3 in power can farm, but he can't really kill a slaughter ever without another hero's help. Oracle's not that hero, Ascendancy is that hero, so they have to watch out for the Meepo. Shasha's having a free time, we're also not mentioning Sidoy at all in the bottom lane. Oh, yeah. Who's having a pretty free time. Mostly because, like, again, as predicted, the, the action's happening towards mid. Where they are looking for another Jug kill. Careful not to get Omni slashed here. Watch this sick Someone hook, ready? Okay. okay, never mind. <laughs> huh? is level 6.5, about to hit 7. It's really nice to get as well. Oh, number are going in onto the Invoker, but unfortunately for him, gotta play really careful there. Don't really want to walk into Double Forge Spirits. Stay my while having that lead on that Juggernaut now. Double Forge Spirits pretty punishing against a aggressive spin on that Juggernaut. So, gotta play very careful there. And uh, the Double Spirits means that Solo Omni Slash is not kill as well. You gotta burst down the Invoker as well. Like, you see the Double Spirits, so you know that he has four Quas and at least four Exhort. So you know that if you kill him, oh, Sunstrike is that Whoa! Oh, oh, he got him! That play from the Juggernaut was so greedy. And Tama Wild is just gonna collect a free kill. I mean, again, you gotta first down the Invoker, otherwise, you know that Pork Boss is gonna regen him up to full very quickly. You know that he has a lot of Exhorts, so he's doing a lot of damage. You can't half ass it up against an Invoker like this. You gotta go all in or not at all. And that was kind of, uh,. I don't know what that was. I don't know if that was all in or not at all. I guess that was the not at all moment. And Midas for Invoker, 9 minutes in. That's that's not a good start. Oh, work with Hop. Oh, that's a nice hook that could be coming in here, Sonic. Oh, dodging that. Oh, the hook lands and gets him. 
Tame my wall. Secures that last hit as well. Silence the meanwhile. Picks up Oracle with the help of Shark's Blow. That's plus two. And this Meepo. Pressure is ramping up for Ascendancy. Does he find the time and space for that boot to travel into Agonyms? I think he's going Treads. Yeah, he's going Treads. It should be Treads, Ags, Dragonlance eventually sell Treads into uh, Travels. But, I mean, I mentioned earlier the Meepo was able to get a good amount of farm without the lanes being punished. Rebels are starting to change that. They're starting to push forward with their lanes very aggressively. So, yeah, your Meepo may be farming, but no one else on your team really is. Like, Meepo is on top of his team's net worth. Darkseer is 1.4k behind him. Meepo's not even on top of the net worth chart. That's owned by the Invoker with Midas. So, Meow, at this point, desperately need the ability to buy space. And they don't really have good heroes at doing it. Like, Mag is okay at doing it, but only if he has a build that's not this. If he had maxed out, Shockwave would be decent, but what is a empower mag supposed to do to get space they can only just sit back and kind of rice up they really have no counter play otherwise yeah and uh if you look at the silencer it's a very interesting three points in curse build nice hook coming on to oracle they missed the sun strike though and they will get the sentry there for the d ward so number comes in there as a d ward option and I think J4 wants to TP out of there. He will be blocked there by my golems. Gets rooted in, so that's in there. I don't know why he went there instead of with his team the other direction. The parting block. I think he, he thought that someone was going to chop the tree down and that they just didn't. Maybe. I think he just wanted to TP out. You know, well, it also support kill. It's 7 to 1 now, you know. It's, uh, puts me out on the board, but they were trailing really far before that kill so Tim my wild about to claim himself a tower as well challenges the oracle to even take that deny oh i mean now we're starting to uh group up towards uh, i don't i don't think now can actually challenge rebels at this stage it has to come down to kind of this uh split pushy type plan from meow but uh, again, I'm not really sure how fast they can get away with that. The concern for Meow should be at this point, uh, the Slaughter has no Blink Dagger yet. Almost. He's farming a lot, so he should know the Blink Dagger is coming soon. And then once that happens, then the, everything gets turned up to max. Yeah. Numbers only has that poor man's shield and face boots. Is he that poor? Dyer's wow, this guy's uh, poor. Yes. Okay, Meepo has the axe, so I think he's gonna sneak a Roche. I'm out of here. Yeah, I'm gonna sneak a Roche Rebels here. Pudge. Pudge can mess with this so much just by hanging around the area. You show yourself off once Pudge near the Roche pit, the enemy team will pretty much never Roche until you see the Pudge, until they uh -oh. see the Pudge uh -oh. back in the lane. Roger. Oh, uh oh, Roger. That's not where you want to go. That's too close. <laughs> oh, what? Oh, still by Roche! But now they know. This guy is the master of denying. Four deaths, all to rush, uh, all to neutrals. Silencer going in. There's the curse. Gonna drop that onto the Rubik, uh, uh, onto the Meepos here. And oh, good global silence will keep them in check. There's the dust. Gonna be popped here. Roshan almost down. Almost down here. The Sun Shrike is gonna land. It will not pop them. But they might be losing their, uh, might be losing their meeples here. But oh, Tame my wild gonna get RP down to the low ground, and we could be in trouble there. Nice wave form keeps them there. There's the Aegis, definitely blast knocks the Magnus out of submission, and Sidoy gonna be healed up by that uh, purifying flame. The hook gonna be missing on that dark here. The urn keeps him uh, topped up. Ascendancy will port to his meeples, and in the end they get the Aegis, but lose it right after losing the Magnus. Uh, as well, Shashlo does have the blink, he does start with the crush, instant hook in there onto Darks here. Bite to follow as well, Ascendancy will throw out a net. There's a vacuum there, try and keep him alive, but Bruka, oh no, will survive there. One more click there, might do the job, body blocking here from R. Nice deny as well. This arm will actually save the Darkseer's life, so great play from the Oracle. Keeps his buddy alive, and in the end, they do secure a punch kill. Finally dying to enemy heroes instead of neutrals. That's... Just the Pudge kill though, like, Meow got killed, uh, I think the Magnus died, someone died there with the Meepo's Aegis. So yeah, you get the experience, you get the gold, that's kinda nice, but Rebels are able to, you know, absorb the loss of the Roche, which is almost expected up against this type of draft from Meow, while at the same time getting a couple of kills of their own. Ooh. While at the same time maintaining momentum, if they go in against the Darkseer, kind of, not really, but, uh, 
Yeah, the Meepo is not with the Aegis right now, which means that, yeah, he can join the fights, but he's not going to feel great about doing so. So most likely, that play from Rebels kept, got them a couple of minutes where they don't really have to worry about Ascendancy all that much. Okay, Oracle in trouble. The oh. hook almost finds him. I'm going to be very happy for that surge there. Bruka stacking up those curse charges on himself. Has to be careful about the tick. It's level 4. Uh, level 3 here on Silencer. 10 seconds to Global Silence. They are waiting for the time to press that button. And uh, you know, just stop the fight in its tracks. Ascendancy has one clone down here on the bottom lane. Gonna try and keep this one... Uh, keep this one real. They find a the Magnus there. Maybe start the last word on there. There is no Global Silence mana. Or that, but an instant purge out here from the Oracle. We'll keep things uh, keep things in check. Sonic looking for that RP and he is dropping close. Doesn't find it. Meanwhile, they're looking for number. And not sure this is the right thing they want. The, uh, oh, the punch goes down to that Meepo. And J4 drops the curse of silent. Will not chase him with the Earth Find. And in the end, it will be a split push that we're coming out here from Rebels instead. Now we're able to shove the top lane a lot while minimizing any casualties over towards the bottom lane and they'll probably take this bottom tier one as well so pretty good management although it was rebels going super super deep while at the same time being uh looked at by a dire observer ward so that was pretty much a situation that was never going to work out for the rebel side that being said the game state still is pretty good for rebels the meepo yes is incredibly far but cdoy now has his lincoln sphere actually gone for iron talon but uh you know we're getting to a stage where the cdoy morphling is actually going to be able to do stuff in these fights as opposed to just split push and farm. Shotgunning a so, Meepo is a thing as well. They have a lot of magic resistance, but if you can somehow kill off a Meepo with a shotgun, then you're golden. And uh -oh. they actually found uh -oh. a Meepo right now. Sunstrike, waveform, got him. Yeah. Meepo's good, but he's not that good. What's happening here is the uh, number. Finally finds this himself in though. Dragon Lance, yeah, I saw that. So I was about to bring it up, but uh, I think Tame Well wants to have some focus fire as well. You know, that's why it's talked about him picking up that Axel build because he really wants to be able to do that big DPS onto the Meepo as well. Amplify and then have someone to strike him down. Can't always rely on Morphling for that. So Invoke are gonna step up to the plate to do something. Four points in curse. What He's do getting... you think about this for J4? Uh, I, I don't mind it too much. It, it is pretty hard to deal with as a as a Meepo. Like, you have to cast your spells, and you have so many things that are going to cast spells. So I, I think that's all right. I think Last Word is just a little bit better. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the Silencer really, his job is just to press that ultimate button. So in the end, it, it doesn't really matter too, too much, I don't think. All right, but I mean, as far as this Invoker's item build is concerned, like I kind of want to harp on this a little bit. Like the usual alternative at this point would be point booster into like half an Ags. He, he uses like halfway to Ags anyway. <laughs> or travels. That travels. Who? Yeah, Invoker has travels now. Okay. Roaming, I guess, just wants to be able to be there when Shushlo finds a target. Or Pudge finds the target. So far, the game plan's been working out. Hopefully, they maintain this lead. Pudge pick definitely has been doing a lot of work for them so far. And uh, Slada and Pudge are going to go hunting. These two heroes need a sun strike if they're going to actually get kills efficiently, unless they find like a random oracle in the middle of nowhere. Like, the Pudge doesn't use Amplify damage at all. Rot dismember. Uh, hook is, is a pretty good amount of damage, but uh, you know, you're up against a Juggernaut, you're up against kind of tanky heroes, a, a mech dark seer. So, without Sun Strike, it's gonna be difficult to actually get kills, but again, it's pretty easy to land those Sun Strikes. Him a while towards top lane, facing up against three heroes in his lane with a blink dagger on Magnus. Oh, Magnus perfect scan! For oh, the read. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Wow, that is gonna cost them. Things is not going right for Meow and the uh, Morphling starts beating away the tier 1 tower. About to get scary soon. Halfway to his E Blade. Oh, they're, they're still following the Invoker. Team Meow has been playing very safe here. Radiance top tower is under attack. There's a 
touch here. Oh, there's the cold snap as well. There's the cut of silent that immediately build out. Nice global that shuts down the Magnus. Immediately gets him eaten by the punch. Hook back in for that minus two. Delicious, delicious. Take my while scoring an unstoppable streak against the Oracle as well. That animation was almost out, and then J4 hits the button with a big fat smile, and suddenly you're killless. Shashlo still looking for a jump there. And, uh, well, not gonna find it. The order there from the Magnus was skewering to RP, and I mean, if you see the Magnus skewering, it's pretty obvious what he's planning to do afterwards. So, uh, J4 getting the perfectly timed global silence. I'm not really sure if an RP would have made that a win for now. Definitely would have been better for them. But uh, yeah, just that's what global silence is kind of for. It is a good skill to have up against Magnus. And even if the RP did go off, the global silence would have gone off right after, and then you know he can't really kill off the heroes that may get hit with that RP. So Yao kind of getting cleaned up there. That is going to buy a little bit of space for Ascendancy. He is incredibly farmed right now. Double Dragon Lance, Sheep Stick on the way. I would expect travels probably after that. But uh, this is like almost peak Meepo right now. Uh -huh. He still has one more point divided we stand to get, but he's not really going to have that much extra room to grow outside of this. Well, the Meepo Double Dragon Lands gives him a lot of stats, but still, and amplifying one of those Meepos means that Rebels can still melt him really fast. 2000 health is not going to do any good when it comes to that. No, right now they're looking oh, for the silencer, but Cedo is walking around the corner there. Sonic very slow on the uptake there, has to be very careful. That nice slaughter jumps right into the Magnus immediately with the hook and the bite here. Sonic gonna be in trouble. There's the last one even on him. Whereas that Omni Slash going onto the Morph Link, he's taking quite a bit of damage, but it's not gonna be enough. Rochka is there, has the hook there. Ready for him. Global is ready. Nice Glimmer Cape keeps Rochka alive, but my Wow is alive. There hooks in that Magnus, he will kill himself. With the rod again, and that E blade from the Morphling already putting a lot of damage in. Nice RP, gotta keep things uh, well, keep things fun for now, but not enough as the Slaughter jumps in there, proving to be the good Meepo counter to shut them all down with the crush. And again, those global silences on point there for Rebels, keeping them all alive. Such narrow corridor there is good for the Magnus, sometimes good for the Darkseer and Meepo, but. Uh... I mean, it's just so good for the Invoker, it's so good for the Slaughter. Even the Silent Shade was still a lot of intelligence from that engagement. And like for Tame My Wild's build, that's a perfect place to fight, where the enemy team has to go through a very narrow corridor, through your Pudge, through your Slaughter, if they want to get to your high DPS kind of right-click Invoker build. Uh, now with no Meepo, will lack the damage to put up a good fight here, especially since they have no Omni Slash. Uh, for Rebels, though, their Slaughter oh, nice is not snap. in the area, so they can't fight either. Morphling jumps in onto the Magnus. He gets Here healed up water. immediately, though. There's the crush. Oh man, it lands on three. The Darkseer are about to disappear. Gets shot in the face there by the Adeptus right number. Now dropping low as well. The Amplified damage so much. One more wave and a pluff will take him out. And now C Doy sitting at a double kill. Two and zero. His two kills in the game. But this Invoker really the one to put out the hurt there. Eight kills in. Juggernaut forced to buy back. 23 minutes in. They're about to lose Rax and Shashlo. Gonna force himself down. The Meepo is back, so maybe they can mount a counter attack. That is if Rebels give them an opportunity to ascendancy. Gonna TP back to the land of the destroyed buildings and uh, oh, broken hopes. A smoke. Okay. Now Tame My Wild has an Aghanim Scepter, so he will always have uptime on that. Uh, I'm mean, in the evoke, obviously, but he is gonna have. Pretty much always the perfectly time response for amiibo whether that's a tornado or a deafening blast those are the two big ones Even ice, rock. ice wall is also really good but uh yeah, there's gonna be really really a tough time here for amiibo where he's not able to land his poop combo he's not really able to right click things because invoker if he's in the area will always have a chance to stop him yeah it's a lot of now in the hunt there for particular magnus does he go in now he looks crazy heavy jumps in onto four doesn't get punished. How does he do it? Oh, nice oh. hook there onto Ascendancy, but the Glimmer Cape immediately gonna bail out. They know that that was coming, and they still want to try and go for the Roshan. Very greedy, if you ask me. There's the jump forward. Now the Global Silence onto the Darkseer. Where's that Amplify damage? They get a bash on him, the last word as well. They will not get that kill. Ascendancy, ignoring the enemies, going for the Roshan. Wait from that E blade as well. Nice bail out here from the Oracle. Keeps the Darkseer alive. He drops the wall on a singular Morphling. 
Oh, sure that's gonna be enough. They're still rushing. There's the hook out. Roshka gets it with the Glimmer Cave. He gets the bite as well. They will E Blade in. There's the RP. Catches Morph and Punch. Number in trouble. They could get some big poof combos. It will be huge. That Morph like going down. He does lose his life there. Now he buys back into the game there. Invoker in trouble as well. Does he have spells? He doesn't have anything. Nothing in that bag of tricks to save his life. Number getting hit by that last word. Does he find enough? There is enough damage. The amplifier damage is it going to be enough there? Red Dash, your E Blade shoots down the morph, uh, shoots down the Magnus and Ascendancy running to the Rosh Pit to escape there. But Roshka finding a kill here. Ascendancy has one clone there, unable to get out of there in time. Will they get the stun on him? No, they will not. But that's a very low half Roshan prime for the take. Uh, there's still Meepo to worry about and a Magnus. They know that he has a Blink Dagger. Oh, it's going so quickly because of the amplified damage. No. Nope. Uh, and he dies. I guess, but now he's just dead. Rip. But uh, that was a pretty decent fight for Meow. A couple things went wrong there for Rebels. First of all, the Invoker misses his Meteor combo on pretty much everyone. They use Global Silence pretty early on in that fight. But they're not able to actually find anyone in the duration of Global Silence. For all intents and purposes, the ultimate from the Silencer did nothing. It, it was pretty much just wasted. Uh, the only target they were trying to go for was the Darkseer, who has Guardian Grief, so he doesn't worry about that. So they've kind of whiffed their initial initiation there. They're unable to get on top of anyone really quick enough. Uh, the Juggernaut kind of, but he has Omni Slash. He had a Killing Ward up on the hill the entire time, so Meepo was taking no damage during that Roche. Yet despite all of those things going wrong for Rebels, they are just that far ahead. and <laughs> They're able to put it together by the end of it. Uh, it does cost them a buyback on the Morph, but now he has an Aegis, so it's you know, kind of going to balance out. Yeah. And that E Blade, we talked about it once it gets on. A lot of those stray heroes are gonna get shot down. And even if you don't, you walk around with red HP. Not something as fun or low HP. Always gonna be sad. Josh Lowe's are playing. Oh, well. Darkseer in trouble. There's an E Blade as well. They get him. <laughs> pew pew. Such high range on that combo. Like. It's just ridiculous. And Meepo has lost um, out to Network this, this for Invoker. This is the shot slow that I wanted to see last game. He played kind of poorly in the early stages, but you know, he's making up for it here. Almost flawless slaughter play. Here we go. Are they going to push this? This Observer Ward is huge. Pudge is going to have a field day here. And this Dragon Lance allows for those for that low ground poking that they might want want so much. They don't see anyone. They're expecting a smoke, I think. Well, Meepo illusions isn't anything. You can poof to Meepo illusions, can't you? Yes, you can. They should probably clean these up. <laughs> They're really tanky though, because Meepo's just stat stacking. 100 something strength. They're a little bit scared, Rebels. They have Pseudoi just like pushing the other lane, taking care of that because he has travels and replicate. They really want to be able to get the hook or, you know, a blink crush on someone, but with no more observer in the base, it's probably not going to happen. He blading once again onto targets. Discovering their illusions, but how's their what's their siege plan here? Hook someone out? Yeah, just wait until someone from Meow gets a little bit stupid. Like wait for the Meepo to go a little bit too far out with a clone, or wait for the Magnus to rely a little bit too much on a blank skewer to get back to his friends. Uh, wait for one of those things to happen, take down that hero, and then you go to town. Uh, you also have a Ethereal Blade Morphling, so you can like insta kip whoever is going to come out of position. Like, Zero is just wanting to get jumped on right now because he just, but they don't. Oh, <laughs> what? Oh, God. Oh, I man. I didn't expect that to do so much damage. Well, Jug's level 13, Morphling's level 18. Boom. Jug just right in the kisser. Right Morphling's face and got a face full of buckshot. And that's Rax. Magnus trying to look for a good opening behind, but the Force Spritz keeps him in check. Okay, so uh, yeah, they, they needed to actually go in on that with some sort of Link Skewer play or something. 
Again, it's into an Aegis Morphling, so like, the, it's so hard to get the kill, even if you do land the initiation. Even if you do, he's gonna respawn back. But Rebels can just do that again on bottom. Morphling has uh, a replicate. Does he have a replicate? No, he doesn't. He's actually stuck in the base. So he's probably gonna run out of Aegis, but still, if they get a pick off Rebels, they don't need an Aegis on Morphling to make a similar play. I know, Silencer. You can see that full point in Curse and Avails push towers. There is still a very important target here, Sonic. There we go, do my start things off there, Sonic. Going in with the RP. Catch a Silencer though. It's not all you want, but you do get two small kills, which is pretty nice. But here comes the Tornado. Is there going to be a combo? Tame my Wild Force off himself away. There is the Tornado and the Rock. They're just walking through it. Do they have that any much. true sight for a ghost walk? Yeah, they do have dust. But they can't see him with this. <laughs> Did he out? Um, that's a kind of expensive usage of an RP there. But still, it's able to uh, actually get Meow a handful of kills. Really important for the Juggernaut at this point, since he is still not exactly where he wants to be in, as far as farm is concerned. He desperately needs some extra bulk, at least an ultimate orb for his man style to not you know, to die to the Morphling like last time. So, yeah, it's expensive for Meow, but it's kind of a play that they have to make just to keep Rebels off their back. Seedoy well, getting bigger and bigger, and I don't think there any, there's anything on Meow that can really contest him at this point. Maybe the Meepo, if they get a full Radiance surround with his escape is being small. down, maybe. Radiance bottom tower is under attack. Yeah, is there any, like, specialized items here? Hurricane Pike on Invoker isn't exactly anti-Meepo. Vlad's on Slaughter is a big one, though. Oh, they almost insta-killed the Magnus. Yep, and the Sunstrike was there looking for a peak. But yeah, uh, Vlad's on Slaughter for the extra armor is incredible up against Meepo. And I guess Juggernaut as well, to some extent. Well, have to see, you have to see some crazy RP so far. This is the time, there's the jump forward. The Get the hook, they even pull him back out of the Jug oh. in trouble there. This is a nice little combo. That was actually sick. Like, Blink Crush into Hook into a Deafening Blast. It wouldn't work, but that was that was a really smooth play. Yeah. Do it again. Oh no, they get the Crush again. Well, this is perfect. It's like opening the gates there to the pain. And now number getting caught there instantly, but getting bitten up. And there is a silence there, so there's no getting out of that one. Invoker strikes him down. The Morphling kills off the Darks here. Meanwhile, Sidoi just bang away at the Rex. Good RP there. Gonna keep things interesting. There's the Hurricane Pike on the team as well. He's just really going ham. They still don't lose any heroes. E Blade coming out. Sidoi gets another kill. Omni Slash going through, but the Meeple's already dead. And now Number gonna have another die back. Another hook here from Rochka. This guy in the Blink Dagger. Hands off the Murderer. And the Sun Strike comes in. This game almost over. Gonna be over now as the Ultra Kill comes in here for Sidoi. And the Meepo just died back. The second set of Rex is going down and another GG in 30 minutes coming out here from Rebels. Damn. Sardar is good against Meepo. Invoker is good against Meepo. Uh, I mean, they, they just made sure the Meepo never got any kind of earth mine combos off. And that's what happened. You get the Agnum Scepter. It was first a uh, tornado to be used. Deafening Blast interrupted the Meepo's uh, kind of sequencing there just by pushing everything back. Uh, and yeah, the Meepo was getting farm, yeah. but the Juggernaut wasn't. Juggernaut didn't do anything in that game, did he? Like, yeah, he got crushed mid, that's what. Yeah, yeah that's, not a, that's not a good thing. It was a rough game, I think. Number didn't play really well these two games, and uh, Meow won on one. The only team to get eliminated twice from the E2CL. That's a, that's a real shame. I did really enjoy some of their experiments, but in the end, you know, sometimes science fails you. And uh, Rebels will take a 2-0 win here over Meow. So it looks like Rebels are your first finalists of this tournament. Uh, the next semi-final is going to be played on Wednesday. At the uh, same time, 1800 CET. And uh, it will be featuring Sharks it, versus... It the same time? Oh wait, is it the same time? Alright, uh, you I know what guys? Stay tuned. 2030 is what you sent me. Okay, 2030. Oops, my bad. So yeah guys, uh, it's 2030 CET. So stay tuned on my Twitter. Uh, on Mike's Twitter for updates on when we go live on this best of three. It's this last semi-final to determine who goes in the final and wins D2CL Season 9. And uh, this event is 
proudly brought to you by Epic Esports Events as well as Face It. So thank you guys for watching. This will be a, all we are well we're gonna be covering for tonight, and uh, we look forward to the next semi final. And uh, yeah, you go check out Michael Caster, Mike Loris. It's in the top right corner, and myself, Lysander. And uh, yeah, we enjoyed casting for you guys tonight, and uh, we hope you have a good day ahead. Bye bye, and uh, be nice to one another.